Never so much if we needed a game to take place, and thankfully that will be happening tomorrow as Michigan hosts Arkansas State at noon, Big Ten Network, as we try to wipe the sour taste of a loss out of our mouth. And certainly now is the time to talk about this upcoming game. So we're going to do exactly that on this episode of Locked On Wolverines. You are Locked On Wolverines, your daily podcast on the Michigan Wolverines, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Friday. We are back and doing it. Locked on Wolverines podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. I'm your man on the ground, Isaiah Hole, publisher of Wolverines Wire through USA Today Sports Media Group. And before we even get started, I do want to eulogize Greg Harden, who unfortunately passed away after complications due to surgery. Um, that's kind of hard to stomach and it's kind of hard to fathom. He's someone that I see on the sidelines every week. And he's been nothing more than gracious uh, with his time. And, like, he was always excited to see me. Didn't know him very well. But you kind of get to know him a little bit through just how many people talk about him. Even Desmond Howard uh, at the top of the press conference last week uh, on the college game day set asked, like, what's it like to be back as a favorite son in Ann Arbor? And he spent that time talking about how wonderful Greg Harden is. Uh, Tom Brady mentions him as pretty much every chance he can get is being instrumental. You see it all the time from current athletes. You just kind of do a cursory glance on Twitter and Instagram. And it's uh, people like Jaden Davis, even that are like, you completely touched my life and you can see it. You can see it when, when you talk with him, even if it's brief, like it's been with me in passing, like we don't, I can't recall many like actual conversations, but it's always been like a fist bump. How are you doing? All that kind of stuff. But you can just see the light that kind of shine behind his eyes. So it's heartbreaking. It's, it's tough to fathom, you know, death usually is. It's one of those things where, uh, I was on my phone, on the phone with my best friend when it happened. And I said like it, the hard part for me, which is, you know, the easiest that it could be essentially, because I didn't know him very well is like, I want to talk to Greg about like, how do we get over this? How do we get past this? Right? Like, I just keep on thinking like, well, I'll see him tomorrow on the sidelines and, and that'll be that, but uh, that's not going to happen. So lost to uh, different styles of Michigan legends one way or the other this week between Craig Arden and James Earl Jones early in the week. I'd imagine there's going to be multiple moments of silence uh, before the game. And certainly it's going to, there's going to be a heavy feeling and there already was going to be a heavy feeling just because of the state of the football team. Uh, but, uh, we'll see kind of where this goes, uh, in terms of the football product, but still, uh, sad to lose Greg Harden. He like by all accounts was an amazing man and you could tell just by how many people he touched. So, uh, wish the best for his family and for those who were close to him that they, uh, that they find peace and solace in this moment. So, I have to start out with that. Uh, so let's talk about football. Um, I'm kind of looking at uh, FanDuel and some of their lines, and I think that that kind of gives us a little bit of uh, enlightenment, at least what the expectations are. Now, you can only get so much from uh, the, the betting odds, right? Like, But at the same time, like, you know, you look at week one, Michigan was a 20.5-point favorite, ends up winning by 20. So it's like it, usually they're pretty close. It was a touchdown and a half game last year. Not last year, last week. And Michigan wasn't anywhere close to that. So there's not a lot of optimism about what Michigan is and can be. Michigan is favored by 22 and a half, according to FanDuel. And there's just a bunch of different little odds here I wanted to kind of touch on here in, uh, in the opening segment. Uh, just to kind of give you a little bit of color as to what the expectations are. In order of uh, the odds that this will happen, the touchdown scores are Donovan Edwards, then Kalel Mullings. Those are the two that are... Uh, in the uh, you, you bet and you're going to get less back, right? I don't know the right term terminology for betting. So, you know, they're the they're the minus ones. Uh, Colston Loveland, Samaj Morgan, Benjamin Hall are the next three. Tyler Morris not on that list. Peyton O'Leary, K uh, Kendrick Bell not on that list. So just that kind of tells you just kind of how limited Michigan is from an offensive standpoint. Um I'm almost surprised they didn't go the Iowa route and just start putting defensive players up there. Um, 
when it comes to the over unders, Arkansas State's uh, quarterback has a uh, you know as a uh, side bet you can make on over under the amount of passing yards. Uh, uh, however, D- Davis Warren does not. So that's kind of alarming, right? Like you can't sit there and be like, oh, I think he's going to get over 200 yards or I think he's going to not even like 150 or anything like that. It, it's that. So like you look at the the alternate passing yards for Jalen Rayner, uh, it's the 150 plus is at uh, minus 136, 175 plus is plus 146. So um, that, that's just not great to see, <laughs> you know, to some degree. Um, so, uh, Davis Warren doesn't have an alternate passing yards, uh, bet feature here. So, uh, moving on from there, Donovan Edwards moves from the, 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 you, you know, the, you bet a hundred to make, you know, thir- you know, 85 type thing to you bet a hundred to get 125 back, all that kind of stuff from 70 yards to 80 yards rushing. Uh, that same type of metric goes from Colston level to 50 to 60 yards. Uh, Michigan's over under is set at 35 and a half. Arkansas State's over under is 12 and a half. So they basically expect it to be a considering that uh, they they expect Michigan to win by 22 and a half. They expect it to be something like a 35 to 12 game. So if you're if you're wanting to see Michigan do better in terms of just the end result it th- this game needs to be much more of the 42 to 3 42 to 7 type variety uh if it is and doesn't end up being uh like a 35 to 12 35 to 14 type thing no it's not going to be a good s- season like we have to recalibrate that and understand that that is uh not exactly a good place to be operating from uh but Certainly a lot of the issues that we've seen, you know, whether it's the coaching, the focus, all of that stuff, they can be fixed by virtue of, you have to keep in mind, and this is me sunshine blowing a little bit. I won't deny that. Uh, Fresno State's a harder group of five team than you want to see to start the season as you're trying to work out, you know, some kinks and all of that stuff before Texas. I had heard I had spoken to people before the game last week who had said like, yeah, we spent all of our time kind of really prepping for Texas and not really Fresno state. So now that they're kind of in season, maybe this will look a lot sharper because it doesn't look like they prepared. Didn't look like they knew what they were doing out there, but you know, if the offensive line looks like it's kind of coming together, Evan link isn't on his back. Um, you're, they're getting some push, all that stuff. Then you, you go forward saying like, okay, well, Part of it was just that week one mixed with playing a potential national champion in week two in Texas and you move on from there. But if it, if it still looks ugly, Michigan kind of limps to a win. And even if it's a decisive win, like it was against Fresno state, then you're kind of like, this is going to be a long season. So, uh, shout out to Canada, Mike, who said this is the most important game of the year. He said this before the Texas game. Uh, but it, it really is like that fulcrum. Uh, to some degree and you go out and do what you're supposed to do. Congratulations. You have USC next week. So um, it doesn't feel great sitting in this position, right? Like fans are looking for something to cheer for. And so far through two games, and it's only been two games, you haven't really gotten that. But the good news is, is it's a long season. You know, they could look miserable against, uh, Arkansas State and then end up looking brilliant against USC. You just don't know. Uh, that's just the kind of part of college football. But uh, you hope to see some vast improvement. You hope to see Davis Warren, who Michigan seems to be riding with, that he has a much better game, that you see the run game going. You see that you just see things kind of working towards something. That's what we need to see. Not only we need to see a decisive victory and also, because it can't just be one without the other, some progress in terms of like you can tell that the the gears are turning and that they're working towards some kind of future here because i think that's the thing that's most alarming about what we've seen so far is it just looks rudderless and just confusing and just not like it's at all what we've seen the last three years or even the bulk of the 10 years the only year that it kind of looked like this was 2020 
And at least against Minnesota, you could at least see some machinations of what it was supposed to be. And right now, it just kind of does not feel like this team has much of an identity other than run the old stuff and let's see how it does. Instead of doing the th- types of things we've talked about all week, which is put the players in the best position to succeed, which means looking at the talents that they each have and putting them in the best position. All right, we are going to continue on. Uh, what do I specifically want to see in this game? And then the final uh, segment, we'll give a score prediction and uh, all of that kind of stuff. Try to keep it short because it's Friday show. Uh, but we're going to continue on and we're going to do so here in just a moment. But before we do passion, drive, and patience, the formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. All right, we're going to continue on here in just a moment. But before we do, when you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you've got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs is the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional with LinkedIn. LinkedIn also knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. One of the things that LinkedIn is doing is they're constantly finding new ways to make the process easier. They just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process that much faster. So post your job for free on linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. All right. So there's a lot that needs to happen against uh, Arkansas State. And... You know, this is the type of game, no matter how good Arkansas State is, Michigan should theoretically win by 30. But again, we just covered it's the 22 and a half point spread. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna do one of those like meandering things like I do, which is go and look at something else that I just suddenly thought of. I know this was like a 99 like percentile FPI win. Uh, it's 92 now. Michigan was favored to win all of its games uh, after week one except for Texas, which they did lose to Texas and Ohio State. But now you look and they're not favored against USC. They are not favored against Washington. See, they are still favored against Illinois. They are still favored heavily against Michigan State. They are still favored, I weirdly, against Oregon because Oregon's not exactly look sharp either. Uh, and then the Ohio State chances are all the way down to 13%, according to the matchup predictor on ESPN. So things are looking dire for them old Wolverines at this point. So they've got to find a way to get some, some of this stuff together, right? Um, and obviously, uh, there's multiple things that need to happen in this game. Key number one, no turnovers. You just got to cut that out, because what's that's one of the things that, Michigan had been pretty good at and hasn't been as of late. Uh, So if we go and look at what Michigan was last year, in terms of interceptions, it was week three that you saw a bunch of them. Um, Let's see, do I have turn? Do they have a turnover margin here? Yeah, they do. Not by game. Okay, it is by game. So they gained an interception. They lost. Okay, they did have an interception in week two last year. Uh, which I don't remember. Uh, but yeah, they lost. They had an interception against UNLV. Uh, they had turned the ball over uh, with uh, three interceptions last year against Bowling Green, but then ended up having four 
uh, or sorry, three, um, three that turnovers that they gained. And then after those four, there was only one other turnover, and that was the interception thrown to Jay Sean Barham. Uh, other than that, Michigan did not turn the ball over for the rest of the year in terms of interceptions. They did have a lost fumble to Alabama. They had a lost fumble to Purdue, but that was it. So when you look at this year, uh, so far they're sitting at negative two in the turnover margin. That's not gonna. That's not gonna fly. They they were only positive in week one because they had uh, two two interceptions that they managed to gain. Uh, so obviously the pick six, and then uh, I don't even remember the other one. There was another one though. <laughs> we know that. Uh, but generally you kind of look through this and it's like six interceptions in 2022 that they, that they gave up nine the year before that. Uh, and even just four in 2020, uh, starting with the Indiana game. And there's just four, those four came in two games, Indiana and Wisconsin, but so far they've lost three in two games. So, uh, you've got to try to figure out how to stave off these interceptions. And you also you just have to take care of the football because that's one of the things where, Michigan was so good at was turnover margin last year, led the country in turnover margin last year. Uh, right now, you look at where Michigan is, it's 105th out of 134 teams. And I'm looking just quickly, uh, out of everyone that Michigan plays, I think only one team is worse, and that's Michigan State. And it's only by one. So you've got to figure this out. You've got to be better. Uh, this still can be a ball hawkish defense. And let's talk about the defense because as even though that was the most troubling thing coming out of the, that last game, uh, I, I feel like this is still going to be a really good defense, right? Like, I don't think that that's necessarily changed just because uh, it completely fell apart against Texas. It looked great in week one for the most part. Um, and we talked about what Fresno State did the next week, albeit against an FCS team. I still think this defense is one that can carry Michigan in most games. You just hope that this was a wake-up call for the coaches to say, like, um, yeah, we need to be a little bit more dynamic. It can't just be all about pressure. It has to be, uh, in terms of blitzing, it has to be a little bit more balanced. It has to, because, I, I, you know, they, they blitzed under, like, the, the last couple uh, predecessors, but uh, it wasn't necessarily, like, the focal point, like it has been under Wink Martindale. So you hope it's not an old dog won't learn a new trick scenario. But they have the players, and as long as they you – know, because here's the thing. Offensively, it's a big question mark because we haven't seen this collection of players do, you know, run an offense. So it's like this could be terrifying because we have to see it, like, actually click. We haven't seen these actual players click. We've seen a couple players go off. We've seen Donovan Edwards. We've seen Colston Loveland. We've seen those guys go off. Really, that's it out of everyone on this offense, okay? Defensively, though, it feels like it can work at some point because we've seen almost all of these guys have their moment. Uh, you know, Mason Graham, Kenneth Grant, uh, certainly uh, were focal points of the defense last year. Josiah Stewart, Derek Moore weren't necessarily complete focal points, but they made big plays and big-time moments uh, throughout the year, not just the Alabama uh, finale, uh, but the... Uh, you know, even just like look at the Maryland game, you look at just a lot of different moments throughout the season. Um, linebacking core has to be more in position. It has the potential to be one of the best linebacking cores Michigan's ever seen in terms of uh, intangibles, but the, you need to make those things tangible. And then the back end is really, really solid. Um, even if it didn't necessarily fully look like it, it you just you need Jair Hill to grow up fast. Uh, he just didn't have much of an opportunity to do so. I think that if you would have thrown Will Johnson out there in uh, the week two of 2022 against a team that is offensively as skilled as Texas, you might have seen kind of a similar result. So, I mean, obviously, uh, I mean, week one, his first game, he got kind of abused by uh, Western Michigan, I believe it was, that they played. So, uh, he doesn't have a lot of time to figure it out, Jair, because, you know, next week you got USC coming to town. You know, so uh, there, there's still a lot to try to figure out. Uh, but I, you feel like, OK, defensively, they can find a way to make that work make, and fix the mistakes that they had. And if they see similar looks to what they saw against Texas, did the coaches figure out how to stop it? Right. Because other teams are going to try to run similar things and see we'll see where that goes. So um, 
I just want to see the defense look as overpowering as it did for the most part against Fresno State and kind of like what we expected them to. And if they do, then you can kind of go forward and say, maybe that was an aberration. We'll know for sure with another data point in USC. And offensively, they just need to find a way to come together and actually look like something that can actually be a cohesive unit. It might not be eight drives, but if they could have like five of eight of the drives instead of three against Fresno State and like basically one and a half against Texas, then you're like, all right, build upon that. Right. Like find whatever it is that you do well and do it well. And uh, I want to see Davis Warren pass for more than 200 yards. I don't really care how or what it just he needs. You need to get him going, even if you get the run game going, which I think is also paramount. And you want to see this look a lot less disjointed as that as it has the last two weeks. Right. Like Donovan's your starter. Stick with it. For a little while, you can work in Kalel, but if Donovan's starting to run six yards of carry, don't just suddenly put in Kalel. If Kalel comes in and he's running five yards of carry, then keep, keep it with Kalel until they stop him and try to get Donovan in. Like, just have a plan and stick with it. Um, but also uh, recognize that that plan has to have some room for understanding what's happening in the game, which is not exactly what I was kind of getting from the coaches at least last week. So um, get the passing game going. Get the, just get the offense going. Get the, get the whole offense going. Defense return to form. So what do I think is going to happen? Let's talk about it here in the final segment. We'll do that here in just a moment. But before we do, fuel up with factors, no prep, no mess meals. Meet your wellness goals thanks to the menu of chef-crafted meals with options like Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Factors fresh, never frozen meals are dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. So no matter how busy you are, you'll always have time to enjoy nutritious, great tasting meals. Make today the day that you kickstart a new healthy routine. What are you waiting for? With 35 different meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from every week, you'll always have new flavors to explore. Crush your wellness goals this fall with dietitian approved meals and ingredients that you can trust. Make your day delicious. From breakfast to dessert, stay fueled with easy, nutritious options. Treat yourself to restaurant quality meals that feature premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, and blackened salmon. Keep kitchen time to a minimum. Factor meals are ready in two minutes. No shopping, prepping, cooking, or cleanup. So head to factormeals.com slash college 50 and use the code college 50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off of your next month. That's code college 50 at factormeals.com slash college 50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is still active. Right, we're going to continue on here in just a moment, but if you are watching on video, then you can see that I am wearing this beautiful undefeated hoodie, even in the 83 degree weather. Part of that is because I, I went and saw a matinee earlier today and uh, I knew the movie theater was cold. So still wearing that, but I'm also wearing the I'm also wearing some uh, some joggers here and I got them all from home field. With college football season uh, now underway, you're going to need to gear up with the coolest Michigan apparel in the game. You've heard me talking about home field for years. You've seen me wearing it frequently, and now you see it again. Uh, home field is a premium collegiate apparel company based out of Indianapolis, and there's no place I would rather get my Michigan gear from. With the retro modern style, home field scours every school's history to find those amazing, unique designs that you're going to love, and you're really going to stand out, especially at your tailgate. They've, uh, they've been running their can't miss kickoff uh, promotional blitz. You can still get some of those boxes. They haven't sold out. Uh, you can get everything you need, a t-shirt, a long sleeve t-shirt, this exact hoodie that I'm wearing. If you go with the ultra premium box, you can get a hat as well. Uh, you can't get this Rose Bowl hat there. Sorry. Um, uh, they also have the, it's sold out right now. I'm anxiously awaiting the return of the coolest bomber jacket I've ever seen. It's absolutely incredible which also celebrates the national championship. So go to homefieldapparel.com. Use my code GOBLUE24. You get 15% off of your first order. That's homefieldapparel.com. Again, all caps, GOBLUE24 is my promo code. Get 15% off of your next order, your first order, rather. Homefield Apparel is just the coolest college gear you can get anywhere. All right, camera's dying. <laughs> We're running out of time. We're going to keep segment three nice and short here, but uh, what do I need to see? We just talked about uh, the, the musts, so what do I think will happen here? I think it will look a lot better. I, I think that there's the pressure on the players and the coaches. I think Arkansas State's probably a, a 
pretty good group of five team. They're two and zero. Uh, they just beat Tulsa, uh, which is coached by Kevin Wilson. They've got some good coaches. I don't know about their players and all of that, but they did just beat Tulsa. Um, I do think this will be a situation where kind of no matter what, um, you're going to see some just better effort from Michigan, better tackling. That was a big issue against Texas, better scheme, uh, maybe backing off some of the aggression because they don't really necessarily need it because you should be able to overpower, uh, with what you've got. Um, I want to, I do still want to see the, the, the simulated, uh, blitzes and stuff like that. I want to see more simulated blitzes than I want blitzes, right? They're Michigan's blitzing like 50% and you know, that, that needs to be more in the, like the 30% range, uh, which is kind of what it was the last two coaching stabs. Um, I, I think you're going to see some smarter coaching and better coaching. Cause I think last week was a little bit of a wake up call. If not, then we're just going to be talking about hubris and the lack of uh, understanding for what your job is as coaches and, and uh, guys who think they're just smarter than everyone else and all of this. But I think that especially defensively, this will look a lot better offensively. I think it will be a little bit of a mix. I think it will look better, but there will still be some groans, right? There, there's still going to be some groaning uh, pains here, uh, but I think you'll see them try to establish the run a little bit better. I think if it's third and two, you're not going to see them throwing an inexplicable pass. I think that they're just going to sit there and say, here's what we want to be. Here's what we're capable of, and this is what we're going to do. Um, I still think you're going to see some missed assignments on the offensive line. I, I, I think that it, that's still just going to be a work in progress until it's not. Uh, it can get there. The guys are talented enough to get there, right? But Evan Link has only played really in two games, right? So it's going to take him a minute. Don Judis has really only played in two games, right? These are the same kind of like things that we were talking about in 2020 and some of those same players that when we saw them the next year, you hope it doesn't take a whole year, but, you know, we started seeing Zach Zinter and Trevor Keegan early on in 2020, and it didn't look great all the time. Uh, Andrew Vistardis looked like a liability before becoming the best center at that time in the Big Ten. So you hope it doesn't take that long uh, that they can figure things out in season. And that's up to the coaches to figure out how to get there. Uh, I think that you'll see some improvement and you'll sit there and come out, come away saying maybe it's not impossible next week. Uh, so with that in mind, I'm going to give you my final score. Uh, I'm going to say that I'm, uh, I'm going to go Michigan. It's going to be somewhere in between Michigan 38, Arkansas State. We'll go 10. I think that they'll, we'll continue to see 10 from a uh, group of five. Uh, but uh, I think that I would feel comfortable with it being more 42 to three, but I think that you'll see something more like that. So that's where we're going to go with it. 38 to 10 Michigan. Um, if it's closer than that, prepare yourselves uh, accordingly, I guess. All right. We'll talk to you. Uh, on Monday, again, the postcast is going to be by Jake Ritma. Make sure that you check that out after the game. That will give you the fix that you need to talk about what just happened. But otherwise, we will be back Monday. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you again soon. Peace. Peace.